that this threatens our people wherever they are in the world because these terrorist groups in many instances or most instances are opposed to everything that we stand for. Daily flashback it was this day in 1984 when for the third time in 17 months American interests in Beirut suffered a deadly terrorist attack. This one was at the American Embassy Annex. 24 people were killed including two Americans. Well, in, in what some may see as a response to criticism that Mitt Romney has done too much fundraising and not enough campaigning, the Romney campaign has just announced a three-day six-city bus tour in their most vulnerable battleground state, Ohio, in an effort to move that state's 18 electoral votes back into at least the toss-up column, if not their side of the equation. Let's bring in our panel. David Avella from GoPack and Corn Bloop from The Washington Post and MSNBC contributor and TheGrio.com's Perry Bacon. Welcome all. David, how relieved are you that you see the Romney campaign spending some time in Ohio? Well, the, the more the Romney campaign spends in Ohio, the better. Uh, it, we have not won the presidency without carrying Ohio. It, it is the battleground. It is the uh, ground zero. And so every day the Romney can spend there talking about how he's going to create jobs, how he's going to protect Medicare. It's a good day for Republicans. You know, I want to talk a little bit here. They, they've had to uh, spend a lot of time fundraising in uh, mm -hmm. the Romney campaign. And it, and Obama too. I mean, it is amazing to me in September we're seeing so much fundraising by the two presidential candidates. But Romney's schedule seems to be he plans rallies around fundraisers. A Florida event, he's flying all the way back across country to Nevada for tomorrow. He'll have a rally, but you, you, you get the sense that it's Vegas, he's got to go get some more money. And yet we're finding out this money is not all earmarked for He's still getting outspent by Obama. It's really amazing. And you see kind of the pinch that they've been in, unbeknownst to us, when you look at some of these fundraisers. Right, because numbers. they did the big press release showing, hey, look at all this money we have. It's looked so, so impressive all along. They've had a lot of cash yeah. on hand, and all, all the talk has been Republicans are going to outraise Democrats in general. Well, now you see that some of that money has not been is not available to them to spend on ads. That in fact, over the summer they were running out of money and had to borrow against what they had going forward. So you can see why they're feeling that pinch, and they're trying to balance the fundraising against the campaigning. Now, to be fair, I, I think we've seen the president on occasion schedule some fundraising, uh, schedule some campaigning around some fundraising. He absolutely, they both, does. they both absolutely do this. But all the criticism that Romney has taken for not campaigning, I think they're probably throwing up their hands and saying, what are we supposed to do? we got to right. do both. But Perry, this is a small donor issue. That's, I mean, when you watch, when I look at, the, when if you look at the Romney FEC report carefully and look at the moves that they've had to make, borrowing money, they, they ran out of maxed out donors for the primary. And so they don't have the small donor thing. Obama had a hard time. Their campaign didn't have small donors kick in until last month. But the convention really helped small donors and really bump it up as well. And that's one thing you have to see. Romney throughout the campaign has not found a way to inspire those small donors. It's something we talked about during the primaries a lot. He was very reliant on, on large donors then, and this hasn't translated to the general election either. He's still having the same problem, and I guess it's not really something they're going to fix it. Uh, uh, David, you guys, uh, you know, GOPAC was invented to sort of create a grassroots movement in a way uh, back in the 70s when it was started. Are you nervous about the small donor issue? No. Uh, donor, our, our base wants to elect Mitt Romney and defeat Barack Obama. And we can sit around the table and talk about all this ad money. Mm -hmm. I'll say two things. One, there will be no shortage of ads in Ohio and Virginia and Florida. Voters won't say, I need to see more ads. I'm not getting enough. <laughs> Let me also say, in, in these final 40 some days. The interaction that people have with their friends and their colleagues will do more to influence votes than the ads people see on television. And so this, this money that now the Republican National Committee has, the state parties have as a result of Mitt Romney's fundraising and doing joint committees, mm -hmm. that's what's gonna carry us over the top. Yeah. Uh, it is the grassroots effort that now uh, really kicks in and, and makes a difference. What did you make of his uh moderating tone, if you will, at Univision. Uh, you look, these final days are about the persuadables as much as they are about the partisans. So you think it was something he had to do? Uh, he, that's who he needs to talk. That's who the 8% are that haven't made their decision yet. Mm -hmm. And so if he's going to win that eight per, final 8%, he has to be talking to them to things they care about and in terms they care about. And that's what he's doing. And do you think conservatives are going to cut him some slack now after just a lot of them, at least of the of the Acela corridor conservatives, if you will, right. just pounding him this week. I mean, well, this week, every time he's every ever time tried, he tried tries to, take, to a, take a turn, you yeah. know, he's always run into trouble. But um, I would suspect, 
Yes, because the, the court or conservatives have been pounding him on other things, primarily his performance, his uh, campaign schedule, as you point out, um, the 47 percent remark. So I think at this point, the piling on, at least from his own party, there will probably be a cease and desist order. But the question, of course, is why now? I mean, it's fairly late to be deciding to tack to the center. Are people going to listen to a shift in tone? Is that going to take effect? Mm. Um, I suspect, you know, the debates are really where that's going to happen. When, go ahead, real quick. But the 47 percent remark is so far to the right. Right, I'm sure that this conservatives everywhere want him to be more toward the middle than that comment. That comment has been something he has to clean up, and he's finally getting closer to cleaning it up. And it's some conservatives who are actually were yes. hitting him on that, so it does give him a little room there. When we come back, I want to talk a little Marco Rubio. But trivia, we asked how many presidents had multiple vice presidents. By the way, none of you got it. It's nine. Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, Andrew Jackson, of course, Abraham Lincoln, Ulysses S. Grant, Grover Cleveland, naturally. William McKinley, Richard Nixon, of course, and then you had Franklin Roosevelt, who had three. Nobody had more than him. Do you have a political trivia question you think should be on the show? Email us at dailyrundown at msnbc.com. We'll be right back.